Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! England's school should be open to all and help students from ordinary working families, the Education Secretary Justine Greening has said today. She insists a new generation of grammar schools will do more to attract pupils from less affluent backgrounds. But critics say there's little evidence to show that grammar schools actually aid social mobility. Jane Dodge reports. Grammar schools can offer a fast track to a better education, according to Justine Greening and she wants more children to get the chance to climb aboard. This makeover of selective education got the thumbs up from parents at a go-karting track in Maidenhead today. George Burkhole is already paying for private tuition for his eight-year-old to help him get into grammar school. How much is it going to cost you in the end? I think between two to three thousand pounds from now until the, t the time of the tests. And why do you feel it's necessary to spend that sort of money? Well, I think it's just to give him a good chance of getting into a grammar school. If, you know, if he does fail the test, he's going to possibly go into or the state school or, if we can, into a private uh, secondary school. And that's going to be much more expensive. You know, we're talking about 15,000 a year. Do you feel under pressure to get through it? A lot. A lot. How does that make you feel? Well, just to make my dad and my mum happy, I tried my best to get to grammar school, so I'll just try my best. Parents here may think grammar schools are a good thing, but the irony is there are none in this area. Children have to go to Slough or Buckinghamshire for selective education, but Justin Greening wants to change all that. The Education Secretary came up with a new definition of what she described as ordinary working families today, those on a household income of 33,000 or less. She said just over a third of children in grammar schools already come from that group, but she wants to see more. When disadvantaged children are in grammars, their rate of progress is twice as fast pretty much as their better off peers. That's how grammars are closing the attainment gap for these children. Uh, and you're absolutely right to say we want grammars to be open to more of those children from disadvantaged families. But that's not what the experts say. The Education Policy Institute and the Royal Society say more grammar schools are likely to widen the gulf in attainment between rich and poor. Well, both me and Justin Greening come from a comprehensive system, ironically, and, you know, it seems to fly in the face of that, that the government are now arguing that we need more grammar schools when the evidence isn't there. So I find it bizarre that Justin is concentrating on this when actually she knows, as well as I do, that 98% of schools are facing a funding crisis. The leader of Windsor and Maidenhead Council, Simon Dudley, is a fan of grammar schools. He helped set up this new free school, Hollyport College. But he says the dreaded 11 plus has to go to make selective education more accessible. So you need a test which can't be revised for, which can't be tutored for, which is a test of potential. Or you're going to have to t you know, give differential entry levels based upon the circumstances, the contextual analysis of the particular pupil. Keith and Helen Harris were more than happy to send their four children to the local comprehensive. With 88% of schools deemed good or outstanding in the area, they don't see the need for the introduction of grammar schools. The grammar school system has led to a lack of social mobility rather than an increase. And this new model is a huge experiment with children's education. It's nearly 20 years since Labour banned the setting up of any new grammar schools. This government plans to overturn that, giving the go-ahead to more selection in state schools.